From across time and space and throughout the multiverse, listen as two generations of comic book readers come together to discuss a single character or event that shaped pop culture as we know it. Let Your Geek Side Show presents Then and Now with Susan and Kitty. Hey everyone, it's Susan. And it's Kitty. And today we're summoning everything we know about a classic Archie Comics character whose recent chilling adventures have put her back in the spotlight. Ooh. I like that I'm doing like witchy moves right you now. You are, and I'm very um, impressed. But it's more like I'm it's more it's more like <laughs> Sorcerer Supreme instead of witch <laughs> witchery. Anyway, traditionally a lighthearted magical character, she has been revisited with a horror spin in both comics and television. Most fans know her for her humor unsuccessful spell casting, and of course, her talking cat Salem. It's Sabrina the Teenage Witch, then and now. Woo! I like these intros where I make every effort in the script not to say who the character is until we get to the line. Yeah, but I'm no, sh- it's really like, good. I hope most people already know who we're talking about. I hope so too, but this is one of them that I, I didn't cringe. Oh, and most good. of the time I cringe. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, so oh. you're getting you're getting less cringeworthy, which I <laughs> oh, thank you. does that mean you're losing your touch? I don't know. I think I'm I'm reining it in. <laughs> okay. All right. So Sabrina, Sabrina. Oh my goodness! Like, I I that love cute little witch. That cute little witch. <laughs> yes. The fact that she went from uh, debuting in Archie's Madhouse in the '60s and and her own subsequent series in as the 70s, Sabrina. Yeah. That, that cute little witch. Mm-hmm. And now we're, we're up to um, the chilling, adventures, the chilling of, adventures of Sabrina. Where people eat corpses and it's like, whatever, that's normal. Yeah. That's what witches do. Yeah. Witches just kill each other and then they come back to life because that's <laughs> what happens. I love Sabrina. I, I have to admit, I haven't read all the like Archie, com- like the classic Archie mm-hmm. comics. I've only dabbled her. in the Archie comics, but that's because like, like they're fun and they're yeah. cute. I was going to say, um, e- even with the adaptations for... Um, I don't just hit don't my get microphone. Violent there. Yeah, I just like randomly hit my microphone. With with the modern stuff, uh, like the Chilling Adventures comics and the television series, and even with like Riverdale, like despite those adaptations, Archie comics and their characters will always be the epitome of what I think of as wholesome Americana. Like just that I that like stuck in its time period. Really? Yeah. That's like I so just I always think of like let's go to the soda fountain and like just. Archie Comics characters as like the epitome wow. of wholesomeness. See, I think of Archie Comics characters as like <laughs> like Betty and Veronica um like one upping each other. <laughs> and then I also think of just Jughead and his burgers. Like that's like I I pick and choose my stuff. I like to be honest, I never think about Archie, even though he's like Aww. the title character. Poor Archie. But in terms of Sabrina, she is such a fun title character to like have as part of your, you know, like cast, I guess, of yeah. characters. And she really has evolved past also just being like a that member cute of little witch. Yeah, and a member of the Archie like gang. The yeah. Yeah. yeah she They're has the gang. A, yeah. Yeah. But uh, no, she has she definitely stands alone as as a character mm-hmm. who And I just love the idea of like her backstory in general. Mm-hmm. Um and of course the fact that Salem is trapped in a cat's body for trying <laughs> to take over the world too many times. I mean, yeah. I was going to say I, I that already sounds like a thing that cats do, so was put Oh was yeah. Making, was making him a cat the best uh way to go about I that? I feel like they probably upped his chances of world domination by making him into a cat. <laughs> um but you know, Sabrina, of course, her backstory is that she's half witch, uh, half human. Her father was a warlock. Her mother was mortal. Um, neither of her parents are alive anymore, so she has to live with her aunts, Hilda who are like and 500 Zelda, years old. who are like 500 years old and very much the opposite of one another. Like, Zelda's very much like the disciplinarian, do your work, and and then Hilda's much more like motherly, like, eat some, break an egg, and let's see if you're cursed, and like, eat this. It'll, you'll feel better. Yeah, and and it's, it's also cool... Um, in that setup with with Hilda, Zelda, and Sabrina, um, you almost have the Maiden Mother Crone uh, or the mm. yeah Maiden Mother Crone mm-hmm. uh, trilogy of because I I would think sorry Zelda she's a bit of a crone mm-hmm. um, in terms of of at least behavior. I've never liked Zelda, so you're not going to insult oh, her. On I know. I, I'm li- sorry. I, I don't mean, like. Zelda. I agree that Aunt Hilda is is much more fun, but yeah. I like Aunt Zelda. No, no, no. Oh. No. No. Okay. Well, that's that's sad. Well, yeah, but, I know. I'm, and I didn't even like her in the sitcom. Oh, like, I know. I know. 
I know. I'm sorry. All right, podcast over. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> no, um, we're not talking about Zelda. We're talking about Sabrina. <laughs> yeah, and and actually, for longtime listeners, if if you've read the, or if you listen to the entire extended universe of our podcast, you'll notice that um, this is the first time we're doing a then and now for Sabrina mm-hmm. or or a related character. Um, but both Salem and Sabrina have featured in previous Geek Culture Countdown podcasts. Yeah, uh, Salem was in our very first uh, top ten cats. Uh-huh. Um, Sabrina was in the witch. In the witch one, mm-hmm. which was more recently. Um, maybe we which did that one on- was she in? <laughs> there you go. You're rubbing off on me. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we did that on purpose. Um, so yeah. So I mean, you're going to talk about the then. Mm-hmm. But are you going? Are you going back as far as the classic '70s comic? Well, the classic or? '70s comic is very much like like the way comics were written back then. If you're talking about wholesome Americana, you're probably more correct. It didn't really get very dark until you got to when Archie Comics went like went in that direction. When you had like you know like Afterlife with Archie and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. And, uh, yeah, and then they continued to do Jughead the Hunger and, and Vampire Ronica. Vamp- I want to read that. I know this isn't about that. It's still coming out right now. I know. I know. I'm going to have to get it in trade. But you know what else is still coming out is the Chilling Chilling Adventures Adventures of of Sabrina. Sabrina. That That comic has, I mean, understandably, it's been in limbo, probably because of the production of the Netflix series. But um, there's only one collected volume that uh, comics fans can read right now, um, and that's the first five issues. And then six, seven, and eight have come out, but nine has been pushed back indefinitely. It was originally originally solicited, I want to say... they they it was supposed to come out in 2017 and then when the show production was announced they said okay we're going to push it back to at least March 2018 and here we are at the tail end of 2018 yeah and there's no issue number 9 but we do have the new Netflix series that's true and so so it's interesting because a lot of the modern sabrina there's not a whole lot to gauge from um but what has been put out has made a pretty strong showing um especially in the we are veering completely in the unwholesome direction of of what witchcraft and and that kind of a character can be. So, have you watched Chilling Adventures? I have not watched all of it. I have watched Neither some of it. Yeah, I've watched some of it. So, there will be maybe some spoilers, but they're only for the, for first, the first few episodes. First few episodes, and, and it's a ten episode series. Um, I I will be continuing it and finishing it. Yeah, me too. Um, but I've I've. I've greatly enjoyed what I've seen so far. And you and I both talked about how we were both big fans of, besides just being fans of the comics, being fans of the sitcom that yes. took place like in the 90s. Yeah, it was like 96 to 2003, yeah, like I want to say. Yeah, early 2000s, yeah. And I was even the right age for Sabrina the Animated Series. I oh, didn't, really? I didn't watch all of it. I but didn't I watch watched, any of that. I watched some of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, it, it's just more of more of that mm-hmm. fun, fun-loving Sabrina yeah. that that was for a younger audience. I just like Sabrina to me has always been like the metaphor, I guess, for like what it's like to be a teenager. Oh yeah. You know, like that's if you're talking about like a theme that we have no matter what version you have of her, it's like being awkward, like wanting to be part of but not being quite there yet. Like having responsibilities that you're not quite ready for, like uh, like That's different w- worlds, different responsibilities conflicting on you. Yeah, wanting to make all the decisions at the same time. That's something. I mean, I know that I'm the then, but this is now. Um, like even in the beginnings of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, like her her drive is the drive to be able to choose. Yeah. Like that's something she repeats over and over again is she wants a choice. She wants her will. Yeah. And and like one of the biggest things that I think is it was almost amusing to me was um so in the the premise of the beginning of Chilling Adventures is she's about to have her dark baptism, which is in this series the the more horror take on her choosing to become a full witch and leave her mortal life behind. I love the fact that she's like, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll get to that, but as soon as I make sure my friends are okay. (laughs) Oh, yeah, 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 no, 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 I'll just push off the dark baptism, like, until I make sure my friends are okay at school. Like, she keeps, like, trying to push that off, and I understand because she's afraid because choosing one side over the other will seem like a loss of choice because it'll put her into a path. Mm -hmm. And so, but yeah, I I mean, even when she's not being called Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Mm -hmm. um, that that is very much her core yeah. character and, and it and it yeah it, and young even womanhood you, and yeah and even when you watch the sitcom like yeah they made much more of like a lighthearted joke of it but when she would like 
cast spells and hilarity would ensue. It's the it's the awkward teenager ish. Like you don't necessarily know the power that you have as like a young woman or like a young person in this world that they've created. And then with her aunts, you see these experienced women who have been doing what they do for mm-hmm. 500 years. And so it's like, well, why can't I do that yet? Well, it's because right. you haven't put it in the time. You're still Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Yeah. And so, yeah, no, and I, I think that's that's a fun thing to see with, with the aunts, especially in the new series, how you can see that all that age has, has put Zelda – I mean, Zelda never – probably was a very caring person to begin with, but it has put so much distance between her and Sabrina. But Hilda still tries to be like relatable and like, oh, you look lovely, darling. And it's going to be way, fine. And- if Lucy Davis is not your favorite part <sighs> of the, the show, best. like, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I love the way she does that quiet, like the way that her lines like quietly taper off and like she kind of talks under her voice. Like when, when Sabrina's like, is it going to be okay? Like I'm, I'm scared. And she's just like, you know, sometimes I think about walking into the woods and burning it all down. Have a good night. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like that, that is so funny because you do get some of the, the macabre oh, comedy yeah. from her, especially. Yeah. And I like the choice because you have Miranda Otto playing Zelda and she's playing her so cold. Mm-hmm. So like, Some of the things that Hilda has to say are also really messed up, but because Zelda is so cold and closed off and so kind, like, you know, she's been doing it for 500 years. So she has that, like, sense of, I already know what I'm doing. Like, I've already been through this. Like, like just... Witches uh, get stuff done. (laughs) Yeah, like, above it in, like, a lot, like, for lack of a better way of putting it, to have Hilda be, like, just as kind of messed up but to have her try to relate Mm -hmm. in like this way that she's not actually relating but she's trying to (laughs) relate and Lucy Davis pulls off that balance like no other Mm -hmm. like again I will repeat it if Lucy Davis is not your favorite part of this show then I don't know what show you're watching (laughs) (laughs) oh my god and then I mean just just that um one of the things that I love the most that blends the the comics life with the television life now is that opening sequence of the Netflix series. Oh, yeah, that's so All the Robert Hack art, but some of it's been updated to actually look like the actors Uh who are playing the characters. But just that... Ah, just that art. I, there's something about Robert Hack's artwork because he he worked with Roberto Aguirre Sacasa, excuse me, um, who's like the chief creative officer right now at Archie or something, mm-hmm. um, who wrote the Chilling Adventures series, yeah. um, and he wrote the show. And yeah. so just there's there's some painterly quality Mm -hmm. that looks dark and inky and so excuse me and so they got that in the opening sequence which is really cool some of the visuals in the netflix show i think try to try to replicate like the look of a comic panel like especially when sabrina's in the middle of a scene that you don't really need to see the background and so they like blur the edges Mm -hmm. and so they try to make it look kind of like those comic panels i think that's a little unsuccessful really Um, that's what you thought it was trying to do that's what it felt like to me because it was like don't look at the don't look at the background look at the foreground and it and making it like non distinct in a way like that's in interesting the comics. that's totally not what I took away from it when they did that same effect like the same effect was jarring to me but like they did it a lot in terms of like when Sabrina isn't sure about something oh okay and and it's stuff like you see it a lot. At least I I correlated it with Sabrina not being sure about something because oh. one of the – and sorry again for spoilers, but this is the second episode it happens in <laughs> when she walks into her dark baptism and everything's clear and then she walks through that gate of fire and things start to blur. Mm. So to me, that's I'll have to, kind I'll have of – Yeah. Go and, forward with that. And it's stuff like um, she runs up to Ambrose at one point and she's talking to him, but as she's talking to him – Ambrose says something. Ambrose is her cousin, by the way. <laughs> um, Ambrose says something that turns out to be a lie. And while he's saying it, the background starts to blur. And then you find out it's a lie later. Oh. So to me, I like that was when I started going, oh, this has to do with the fact that the character isn't sure about what they're doing mm. or saying. So a lot of this thematically to me, even especially in the show, but also when you move back to – the sitcom and the 60s and the 70s Mm -hmm. comics is that Sabrina isn't sure. She comes from two worlds. Right. So I I thought that that effect had to do with that. Well, I'm I'm sure you're absolutely right. I mean, I I think for me also (laughs) there there are just some of those moments where 
I, and I'm but I mean, looking, that yeah. could also, I mean, because they're trying to capture the, there's some very specific like iconography, especially of just like Sabrina in like clearings and some of the stuff you can actually see in the opening sequence with yeah. those visuals. But just some of those moments, I think they were also trying to recreate in but the visual format. I'm, But I, I, that might just be their way of building on what the comics have done to yeah. begin with, because I'm sure that that thematically also appears throughout the comics, you know? Like, if those same moments are visually replicating the comic panels, mm -hmm. like, that, she was probably also unsure in those comic panels. Yeah. So it could be just, huh. like, a theme throughout everything that is, like, a visual cue that they've been just working with for mm -hmm. years and years. And now it's finally really obvious because it's a Netflix show. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I'll have to keep that in mind going forward yeah. now. Um, yeah, and I, I think one of the, another one of the things that I've not... Not 100% sure if they're doing it successfully or not, but it's interesting. Um, the the blending of the idea, like, because it, it is a much darker take. And so it's like, how do we how do we go dark without making it straight gore and horror? And, I mean, there is a lot of creepy imagery and disturbing stuff. But oh, for sure. It, it, it starts psychological and then we'll get visual. Um, but the the places from which they're drawing their witchcraft lore, I think – there's some Satanism, just like straight Satanism, mm -hmm. and then witchcraft, um, th the fact that she summons the weird sisters with the actual lines from Macbeth. Yeah. It, it's interesting, but I think I've I've seen some people turned off by it, and I'm, I'm taking it for what it is, but... I think that that's um, like a side effect of making it darker, yeah. you know, because before she was just doing like quirky little spells, you yeah. know? And so... When you think about how will we make this creepier and more like geared towards horror, that that's when they blended stuff and maybe maybe it works and maybe it doesn't. I haven't gotten to the end of the series yet, mm -hmm. but um, I completely agree with what you're saying. Where you're just like, okay, well, where exactly is this lore coming from? Maybe they explain it in a way like better um, later in the show. Maybe, yeah, I, and that's just something I wouldn't know no. because I haven't finished the right, series yet. Right, exactly. But, um, Go ahead. I was going to say, I would like uh, us now to address the cat side I was, elephant oh in the room. Oh, my God. I was just going to say that. Oh, that's so weird. We were, like, <laughs> same-braining it because I was, brain. like, literally just going to be like, so. So while we're talking about things that have been reinterpreted in yeah, a different fashion. I was going to say. So let's talk about Salem. Yeah. The cat-sized elephant in the room. First of all, let's start with, like, the <laughs> Salem that everybody knows and loves. Yeah. So if you're, if, I mean, if you watch Sabrina the Teenage Witch in like the late 90s, early 2000s, you're dealing with like a puppet Salem who did things like literally file his nails sometimes. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> I know. I still use that gif sometimes when you're just like waiting, like <laughs> Salem filing his nails. Yeah. Because Salem has been, I mean, every witch needs a familiar. Mm -hmm. And I Salem have one. has been, <laughs> and it's a cat. And it is also a cat. Um, and Salem has been a staple of the comics and, and in oh, yeah. many different versions he has talked, but I think none has has had quite the cultural impact as Salem in the original oh, yeah. in the sitcom. In the sitcom. I, it's not even the original sitcom. I think yeah, they did there, one was, in the 70s. there was there was an original. There have sitcom. been so many Sabrinas, you guys. Like it's so cool. I but mean, the, she's a relatable character. I get it. Is. Like why not have different generations connect to her in the way that they can connect? Like you know, we're in the Netflix generation. They can binge ten episodes. We were like the sitcom generation yep. where we could sit there and watch. Like oh, it's Friday night. Sabrina's yeah. gonna be on. It was on the TGIF yeah, lineup. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. It was like my favorite. And then I loved. Melissa Joan Hart. Um, I still have like a soft spot for the actresses who played Zelda and Hilda. Beth Broderick and, and Caroline Ray. Ray. Yeah. yeah. Like I will still watch stuff that they're in and be like, ah, it's Aunt Zelda. <laughs> um, even though Zelda's not my favorite. But Salem, Salem in that show was spectacular. He stole every scene that he was in. So do you want to explain a little bit about Salem's backstory just in case people so, are unfamiliar? So Salem was a demon sometimes he was a warlock he was very very powerful in his human or not human he was never mortal in his non-cat in his, his non-cat state in fact he tried to take over the world so many times that he was punished <laughs> just, just so many times <laughs> so many times that he was punished and forced to remain a cat um and in the chilling adventures of Sabrina, she called for a familiar, 
and he is who showed up. Yeah, she basically posted a wanted ad in the forest. With yeah, because she wanted, supernatural means she wanted. She didn't want a professional familiar. She wants a familiar who wants to be a familiar. Yeah, because in the series, um, you'll see if you watch it. Uh, basically, she has a catalog, and yeah. the, her aunts are like, "Pick one of these. These are the pre-approved." Yeah demon familiars and, and she's, she's like, like no. I, I'd rather have one that wants to be my familiar and that way we can be and equals. specifically wants to be hers like uh-huh. we'll answer her call yeah so she puts out the call and Salem is who answers and the first time we see him he's in like a creepy kind of demon form and he does speak and he does one speak. line one line and then turns into a cat and then he doesn't yeah and then you're sad <laughs> yeah, we do get a lot of, I mean, we get a lot of cat emoting mm-hmm. and stuff, which is, is still fun. Yeah. Um, but And he's definitely there for all, like, like he's kind of a tell in the series. Yeah. Like, you know something's about to happen because Salem's reacting a certain way. But he's definitely not, like, filing his claws <laughs> with a nail file. And uh, contributing one-liners. To yeah, or, like, attempting to eat cereal at the breakfast table with everybody while they, you know feast yeah one unfortunate detail which i'm sure it's another one of those like we'll fix it and post things but kiernan shipka is allergic to cats as they discovered after she was cast uh-huh. uh so they couldn't use they couldn't use the cat uh stand in for too many scenes and they and they do some cgi stuff but yeah but that's just unfortunate i know and ir- ironic i know right um, um but so she is allergic to cats but uh I, and i mean i'll have to see as the series goes on and uh-huh. i continue to watch um he he does talk in the Chilling Adventures comics. He does. Um, he's definitely not funny. If if he is funny, it's the incidental like, haha, oh, that's really messed up kind yeah. of way that mm-hmm. that whole series is. Um, but so far from what I've seen, I almost feel like some of his talking would maybe take away. Like I would love to have him talk, I, and and even if it was just to Sabrina, I think as we mentioned, like we could have that familiar yeah. in which bond where they just communicate totally. to each other. But like I, how I talk to my cat. Yeah. I just think, unfortunately, <laughs> it's understandable that it, it could possibly have taken away from some of the atmosphere. Right. But maybe that's something that they can build on moving forward since yeah. the Chilling Adventures does already have a second season ordered. And it's already in production, I think. Yeah. So there you go. Maybe yeah. it's something that they, like, as Sabrina develops her power, she's able to, like, converse with her familiar mm-hmm. in, like, a more coherent type way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and maybe that's something that comes with with or, it. Because yeah. cause I don't remember the Raven's name, but uh, oh. Zelda talks to her, mm-hmm. st- like, Stalthus or something. Yeah. Or... And also, like, I don't... Do you remember, like, I know that obviously Salem and Sabrina talked in the sitcom, but, like, I don't remember how Salem got to Sabrina. Was he just already there in the sitcom? I think he was already I there. I think he was. Okay. I think he was. Because I remember the sitcom started when she, like, discovered she was a witch. Yeah. But, like, I think, I, f- I feel like he was already with the family. Yeah, somehow. Okay. I have to go back and rewatch. Yeah, I know. I guess we're going to do that. And I think, I think the last thing I wanted to touch on... Bet- differences between the sitcom and the Netflix series, the sitcom was so firmly like grounded in a time period. And oh, it was yeah. like, this is 90s. And it, yeah. was, it was set in Massachusetts. I don't it think was. it was the fictional town of Greendale. Um, but it's very odd. You'll notice in it, and it's similar with um, Riverdale. Yeah. If you're watching the, the Chilling Adventures on Netflix, you'll notice that the series kind of wants to have its foot in multiple time periods because there is that classic Archie's 60s aesthetic. Mm-hmm. But you've got characters with laptops and flip phones and or not flip phones, but like oh, smart smartphones. Phones. Slightly, yeah, slightly like, smarter phones. phones. Sorry. I'm sorry. I don't <laughs> slightly smarter phones than that. Um, and so you, but but it but it refuses to pin itself to a time period because you do have you, you do have that antiquated style. I mean, if they're trying to uh, match Riverdale tonally, it, they completely do. Because mm-hmm. Riverdale also straddles that same line where, like, does it take place now? Does it take place in the 50s or 60s? Like, yeah. maybe, maybe not. And you can see, like, there's there's cultural issues that do arise. And, and while they may morph into different forms between the eras, you can still see, I mean, there's the issue of like bullying yeah, bullying and, and women's rights at that time. And, mm-hmm. and, but 
against this backdrop of oh, there's a town where witches live and stuff. Um, yeah. So so it's interesting. I it's not bothering me too much. It doesn't. Uh, about bo- the I mean, I'm a hardcore Riverdale fan. So yeah. It doesn't bother me in Riverdale and that particular straddle in Sabrina. I guess maybe I just expected it because it's supposed to. Yeah. Sort of take place in the same world ish. Yeah, but the fact that the '90s sitcom was so firmly like this is very '90s oh, of yeah. us was mm-hmm. was interesting. Awesome. But yeah, it's just uh, it's it's cool to see her back in the spotlight and I hope I hope the Chilling Adventures series uh, of comics uh, comes gets back. It comes back gets some more traction because I'm sure people are clamoring to read it oh yeah now. and how unfortunate would it be to like walk in like be a huge fan binge the 10 episodes I'm sure most people there aren't have, even 10 issues I know and like to have you know most people probably have already binged them to walk yeah. into a comic shop and have like those like people who work there be like well there's this one trade yeah yeah. Okay. Hey, hey Roberto hey Aguirre Sacasa, please, <laughs> please, please, please. We know you're working very hard on the on the series. Please but. bring it back to our shelves. <laughs> awesome. So if fans are looking to follow the classic adventures of Sabrina, I would recommend picking up some of her old stuff. Like in the, the her she had a volume from 1971 to 1983. That was her volume one of her own series. Mm-hmm. So you could pick that up to get some then. You can watch the 90s sitcom. Yeah. That's also then. Um, and for her modern chilling adventures. For her modern chilling adventures, it is all the chilling adventures. I would definitely recommend watching the Netflix series and then just be aware if you're going to look for the comics. There's not that many issues out, but I'd still recommend uh, picking up whatever you can. It's it's published through Archie Comics. You'll know it by those gorgeous, gorgeous, like orange colors yeah. um, mm-hmm. on the covers and stuff. Like it's very orange, very red, mm-hmm. uh, thick black ink. And then, of course, her like platinum blonde yeah. kind of look it looks on the it looks like the opening credits oh yeah yeah basically you go i want a book that looks like the opening credits of the netflix series yeah. and, and there you have it so i mean that's that's what there is and and it really also depends on if you're looking for the horror version or the comedy that's version, true because you could you could do a then and now divide but maybe you're just hey i'd like the comedy version of sabrina yeah. and then yeah. that's it's just it's cool that there's such different eras for her character and- it makes sense because she's a teenager. She doesn't quite know what she wants to Being be Being a yet. teenager is horrifying. Yeah. <laughs> but it's also pretty hilarious. <laughs> okay. So once known as Sabrina, that cute little witch, this classic Archie Comics character has walked the paths of mortality and magic, comedy and horror. Whether she's having a chilling adventure or cracking jokes on a sitcom, Sabrina Spellman represents the trials of being a teenager with some magic in the mix. Since her debut in the 60s, Sabrina has proved that she has what it takes to keep spellbinding audiences across comics and television. Thank you so much for joining us today. And that's Sabrina the Teenage Witch, then and now. For more ad-free pop culture news and content, visit GeekSideshow.com. Thank you for listening, and don't forget to let your Geek Side show.